Welcome back to 3D Animation, um, Intro to 3D Animation. Today we're going to talk about animating MASH uh, motion graphics networks inside of Maya. So the MASH system is really amazing and allows you to do a lot of really cool instancing of objects and making these big arrays of objects and being able to animate them over time. So I'm going to do show you some basics and then I'm also going to focus on the MASH music um, kind of visualizer element that allows you to kind of put things in motion based on various um, signals coming from a wave music file. So <clears throat> starting things off, I'm just in classic modeling mode right now. I'm going to go ahead and bring in a, um, let's do a cube. Okay, so a simple cube. I'm then going to switch my uh, modeling set here over to effects just so I can get MASH to come up. And if I actually come up on the right under workspace, I have a MASH workspace setting that I can do as well. But either way, I have MASH that has come up now. Uh, once I switch to effects, I can go to the MASH tab. If I go to actual like the MASH workspace, it kind of switches up my menu a little bit, but it also brings up the graph editor, which is really nice. So I think if we're going to talk about animating, we might as well bring up that workspace. So right off the bat, I've already gone through MASH in my 3D modeling course um, in a lot more detail. So I'm not going to go over every uh, type of uh, MASH um, system that you can set up, but we'll go over some basics. So here I've got my cube, which is going to be repeated. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to hit the Create MASH Network button. I could also come up to MASH and say Create MASH Network button, but I'm just going to hit it right here. And right off the bat, it goes to a default where it basically repeats, I think this is 10 iterations. So right off the bat, it has created by default what's called a MASH distribute. So under your attributes menu over here on the right, you'll see you have your MASH node systems that you can turn on, and then you have the MASH distribute here. And so I could change this. I could say make more than 10. I could have them go 14, 15, 20. Uh, this is just a linear distribution. And then I can say the spacing between each one, I could increase that as well. Um, so if I do go to a higher number, I have space in between them to make it happen. Or if I want to increase this number, it spreads them out further, right? So that's kind of cool. Makes a linear grid. Um, there's a couple different ways to set this up. Distribution type, there's radial, which puts them into a circle. Uh, and this changes like the radius over time. Keep in mind, all of these attributes are um, uh, able to be animated by setting a keyframe on them. So I could have this radius kind of grow over time and send these objects out. I can also change the angle. So I could animate this in of, you know, have that come in over time, the zero angle. Just set that at zero at first or negative, whatever the value is right there. And then uh, set a key and then move on my timeline and, and go back to full negative 360 or the opposite and go regular 360. So whichever direction you want to go. There's also a Z offset if I want to give it kind of a corkscrew vibe to it. I can even, I believe, put in like 720 and it'll go more than once on 360. So then I can really make that Z offset stretch out and I could increase the number here quite a bit and have quite a little helix going on, which is kind of cool, right? So pay attention to all those different settings that you can do. There's radial, there's spherical. So that kind of puts it into this like cloud of cubes that we can work with. And we could populate that more over time and animate that in as well. Mesh, you actually have to connect a mesh object. We're not going to go over that right now. There's a grid that you can lay out too, which is kind of cool, which I think we will work out. So this is, a, I believe there's nine in the grid here, three on the X, three on the Y. And, uh, you know, you can decide. I can also go, I believe, yep, I can go this way as well, which is cool. So I can go in the, along the Y axis and make a whole grid of these over time, right? And I could play with uh, the spacing in between them and animate all of that, which is kind of fun. So thinking about animating that stuff over time. So I'll bring this up to say six and I'll bring this to six, right? And I guess I'll do the Z distance at six just to maintain it as a cube. That's pretty good. And uh, yeah, there's more. There's these initial states, pain effects, volumes, but let's stick with that grid for right now, okay? So now that we have a grid, um, we could add what's called an audio node to this. So obviously we could animate over any of that over time. I didn't do it, but you know, we could animate these distances 
could play with the numbers in the grid, do all sorts of fun stuff. Um, but I want to show you some audio reactions. So I'm going to come in here while I have my mash selected and I'm going to choose add an audio node. I click on it and I add the audio node. So uh, right off the bat, I got a warning, no audio file found. So we have to, that's the first thing is load your audio file. It has to be a WAV file, a .wav. It doesn't recognize AIFs or MP3s. So I already showed you in a previous lesson on how to save out a WAV from Adobe Audition. So I have one on my desktop that we were actually working with. This is that mix down track from last week. So now I've got it in there. However, um, all, all I can do right off the bat is go ahead and you'll see it's starting to reverberate to the track, but you can't hear the audio until you actually load it into your timeline, right? So just like I showed you last week how you could load audio, just go to your, um, the easiest way I think is to go to your little volume button here in the bottom right, click on it and import audio and just load the same track. And I'm going to increase my timeline just so I have a little more with it to about 500 frames. And now you should be able to hear that through my mic. And right off the bat, you can see how it's reacting along the Y axis, kind of going up and down graphic equalizer style, right? Pretty cool stuff. And if I go back to my attribute here, I have to stop on it there. There we go. Let's bring up the attribute editor again. And if I, you'll see I now have a mash one audio item, the same place where I loaded in the WAV file. And if I hit play on that, I can actually adjust these in real time. So that is the Y value that I'm, I'm changing the scale on, scale on. I could increase that, make it a, a higher amount. I could go to like 200 and you'll see it goes quite a bit more, which is kind of fun. And if I go back to my distribute, I could go from the grid to a radial, right? That's kind of fun. Now let's take that back from being a corkscrew though. Let's go ahead and uh, let's see. I believe I'm going to go ahead and stop this real quick and take it back to the beginning. Let's just turn this back into a regular sphere. Oh yeah, let's get that back. 360 and then the Z offset will bring it back in, right? Just so you can kind of see this a little easier. And then I'm going to change the axis so it's going kind of vertically off of the circle there. There we go. And we'll be able to see this a bit easier now. Let's take a look. So that's kind of cool doing a radial. I think the music is a little too high right now. Let's bring that down. And instead of that direction, let's try in the Z direction. There we go. Now we're getting a nice ripple effect. Let's take this to like 20 or maybe like 50. You can see the, the vo vocal patterns there are really making it pop. That's kind of the louder part of the track. We're getting a nice visualization here though now. And there's a couple modes. There's spectrum and then there's average. I kind of like that one. That's like this rotating pulsing one. And then within each of those, there's different types of, um, actually it's not in that one. I believe it's down here. Mm, hold on, let's see. Oh yeah, down here you have a square root version. This is under advanced options, the Fourier scaling. Normal, square root, and then logarithmic. You can see logarithmic really takes it up distance wise. And then you could change those as well back between average and spectrum and then try those three different options again. And back to normal. So some pretty cool stuff. And you know, all this can be animated over time. You could have it go in one direction and then start having it go out just again by right clicking on any of these and setting keys in your timeline. And you start to get some pretty powerful music visualizations, sound visualizations, whatever you want to do with it, with whatever object. I just did it with a cube, but you could do this with any shape you want, which is pretty amazing. And there's a lot of settings in here that for you to mess around with. There's like the low threshold and the high threshold, like how far you want it to go around and, and how high you want them to go off. There's strength, like I can take that way down and then bring the strength back up again. So all of that could be animated. I could randomize the strength over time. And like I said, it doesn't just have to be scale. You can make it move in position. 
So we can have it move along the Z position or the Y position. Could have it go maybe say a hundred. And then you can come back again and start messing with your distribute. Say, no, I need more particles to work with. Or I need to make this radius larger. Maybe I want to play with the angle of it a little bit. Or that Z offset again. You add some fun visuals to this and some lighting effects and render these out and you've got some really cool visualizations to add into your animation, particularly when you're trying to visualize sound. So obviously I would animate or render this out the same way I would render anything. You know, I would bring in a um, some form of light. So just by default, I bring in a sky down and uh, I would get back to my original cube here and uh, Probably, I think it's hidden right now when it became part of the MASH network, but I, I, I would add a texture to it and then render it out and have some fun with it. So let me see if I can bring that in. Yeah, there's the original. Assign a new material. There we go. It still does it to all and then hide it again. And then maybe I bring in a ground plane a circle, big disc. There we go. And let's see how that looks. Let's bring that up and render it real quick. There we go. And you could start to see how this would create a pretty dynamic visual that then you could layer it in and composite into all sorts of other stuff with your animation. So plenty, plenty more inside of the MASH network. If I go back to MASH and I come back out to here, obviously there's all sorts of other systems out here that you can look at. There's you know all sorts of bouncing dynamics. There's flight systems for flocking. Uh, there's more of these signal patterns that you can do that follow kind of mathematical systems. There's a replicator that will like duplicate what you already have here. You know, I can take this and add a replicator on. You can have multiple nodes on top of it. And then you can see, then I have that going off into the Y space there, but it could also come this way, whichever way I want. Watch that. Now we start to get some pretty cool complex patterning. So a lot going on here that you can play around with. So I can go as high as I want on the number of replicants there. And so much more to play with, with patterns and curves and all sorts of different stuff. See where it takes you. All right, I'm going to stop. So you'll have to kind of play around and see what you want to do. Oh, one thing I wanted to show you on the MASH network. There's a really cool, if you come back to the MASH tab here, I always like to make sure everybody knows about this MASH editor window. You can turn on and off. So if you didn't like the distribute effect, I'm sorry, not the distribute, but the replicator, you could turn that back off. If you didn't like the audio, you could turn that back off. So these leave them there, but it's like little switches that you can turn on and off. You can also delete something from this list if you don't want it there in the future as well. So keep that in mind. Nice to be able to pull that up and kind of flip things on and off if you added a bunch and then now then you don't want it after the fact. That little guy allows you to do a lot with it. All right, I'm going to leave it there. Quick lesson. Hopefully that helps you, puts you in some new directions for adding some motion graphics effects to what you're doing. Um, Please reach out if you have any questions, and as always, thanks for tuning in.